If you were in the purge, would you hide or would you murder? Hide. A bajillion where, percent. Where would I'm you hiding. hide? I'm not telling you and them. <laughs> what the That's hell? for me and only me to know. Are you ready to rumble? <clears throat> um. That's a hell yeah, baby. <laughs> yes. She's, she's ready to start. Welcome to Wine About It, everybody. Welcome to Wine yeah. About It. I was just, cool. I got a text from my sister. My sister's a volleyball coach. And um, so they review film, you know, like they watch their old games mm -hmm, or whatever. Mm -hmm. I got a text from my sister of my two and a half year old nephew in their office watching film on an iPad going, oh, baby. <laughs> That's so cute. He's like, just he, no clue. He knows what's going on. Oh, baby. Like he's going to be a volleyball prodigy for sure. Sick. I played volleyball once. Twice. I played volleyball in high school. I played in middle school and then I played IMs in college. That was bad, 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 bad. I was okay. Junior year, I played varsity. No Whoa. biggie. Uh, but then senior year, I got cut from the team for having a bad attitude. Really? Yeah. How? Did, how? I had a bad attitude. What'd you do? <laughs> I but, like they like sat you down and they were like, "We can't have your no, attitude on this team." No, it was during tryouts. It was during tryouts. Um, it was. I got. I mean, you know, senior year tryouts, and it was weird because like I always got voted like I was always the captain and shit like that because of who I am as a human. Um, I don't know what I did exactly. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think there's one instance because I was always the captain. I think it was just an excuse. I don't think I was like good enough. And so she was just like looking for something because I, I actually don't remember being particularly feisty. So did they say like, anything about your attitude or you just assume it? Yeah, your attitude? no, specifically. They, what did they, they say? She told me. She just said you have a bad attitude. Yikes. And I was like, okay. But then I was like also on cheer. And if I was going to be cut from anything for having a bad attitude, it'd be cheerleading. Because I had a bad attitude when it came to cheerleading. How so? Were you just like super defined? I just coaches? always show you're up like... late. Because like when you're in a sport in high school, you know how you get it like for a period. Mm -hmm. So I'd show up late all the time. And like. I actually didn't have that in high school. Oh, you did? I'd go after school. Yeah. Yeah. What, yeah. If you were. It, I think they only had it for varsity. They didn't have it for anything below. But once you are on a varsity team, you have to make you have to, you have to add it as an elective. Mm. Um, but yeah, it just just wasn't you know it wasn't it wasn't for me. So yeah, I got eliminated. I got cut. I got cut from volleyball. But then I played some like rec volleyball as an adult, and I loved it. Sick. And you yeah, want to play? My sister now. got like. And I would like to play volleyball. My sister got like full ride scholarship for volleyball, and now Whoa. she's a coach. Cool. Yeah, she's impressive. My sister I was... got recruited for D one soccer. Really? Yeah, she's crazy, and she's four eleven. Oh my god! She started as a freshman. <laughs> yeah, I'm she's the no least joke. athletic in my family. She's no joke. I tried my best. Actually, well, what'd you do this week? I want to find a picture of my sister. I went um, dress shopping yesterday for the gala, and I got my dress. But I think I should show Patreon and not YouTube. Oh, I don't want to drama. Leak it. That's so mean. I don't want to leak it. I'm really excited okay. though. I spent all day yesterday dress shopping, almost all day. Where's this picture of my freaking sister? Oh, here it is. Look how funny this is. Actually, let me draw out all these other girls faces um i spent all day dress shopping i'm really excited about my dress it took a long time my boyfriend came with me he was very supportive it was very nice um and i watched football yesterday roll tide hook em horns you know yeah why um, are you doing that i'm having a great time um i love them both <laughs> um and and i worked last week uh, I started working on, I'm building a giant haunted rat maze for my rats. I wish you That's lived here. Fun. We would have so much fun. I'm doing. Yeah, I would love building that. I'm Did building. Did you see the video I sent you of rats last yeah, night? Yeah, it's so funny. So funny. Um, I'm building eight different rooms that are all like spooky themed. So I'm like painting cardboard and making mm. like mini sets in eight rooms. It'd be so fun to do together. Uh, so I started working on that because I have a fall carnival coming up um, in late. No, October. early November. Oh, 
November 4th is my fall carnival. Um, so yeah, I started that this week. What'd you do this week? I, I almost died this week. Okay. Not to be dramatic. She but I did put die. randomly. She put. We have a topics channel in the in our Discord. I didn't put, know how to process. And she put almost died at Disneyland. And I texted her and I was like, "Are you okay?" And she's like, "Yeah, podcast." <laughs> okay, I like, look at this picture of my sister. You, but this is my sister as a captain on her team in college. <laughs> oh my god, she's tiny. She's so little, but she's so cool and strong. One of four captains. That's so funny. Isn't that so funny? <laughs> yeah. She's my icon, my hero. Just a small queen. Yeah, so I... Oh, no. I just saw some... Um, it'll be fine. Okay, so my family was in town, which means the Disneyland quota goes up. So instead of once every two weeks, it is every day every while they're day in town. For 10 hours a day. Yeah, it's kind of a lot, actually. Mm -hmm. But... Um, I love Disney during Halloween and they have a bunch of like special menu stuff. And so I was kind of excited. Maya, shut up your hamster. She's not it's doing so anything. Loud. He's who is I think it? My, is it Maverick? My dog just came through the dog door. I didn't think you could I'm hear sick that. I'm sick of your dog. All I also, hear is he's not a hamster. He's shut up the guy. hamster. He's just a little guy and he was sleeping. Yeah, it's your dog. I can hear it. Everybody, this is Mushroom. Okay, he's ready to listen to your story. Okay, Mushroom the Measle. The he's Weasel. He's a ferret. Mushroom, he wants your mouth so bad. Yeah, he likes lip gloss. It's yummy. Do you guys kiss on the mouth? No. He wants to, but... I think he says yes. He says yes, we do. Um, okay, so... They have special Halloween menu items, and I show up, I'm, and I'm like, hey, family, have you eaten lunch? They're like, yeah, we already ate. I was like, what'd you eat? And they were like, Flo's Chicken. If you don't know, uh, Flo's Diner at Disneyland has cars. really, yeah, yeah, it's in the Cars Land. So sorry, someone's going to be like, Disneyland, Get California off. Adventure. What is going on with you? My dog wants to eat my ferret. Do you live in a zoo? Yeah, in a zoo? <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. Sorry, oh everybody. God, this is wrong. severely unprofessional. I'm so sorry. Okay. It's fine. Flo's Diner. You're lucky this isn't on the Patreon. People pay for that. <laughs> Piss. They have dogs, okay. too. Uh, and ferrets. I get it. I, I go over to them. Flo's Diner is in Cars Land, and it is great chicken. They have great fried chicken meals, and it's very filling, and it's honestly like one of the best foods over at California Adventure. Because it's also the it's best like, place in Disneyland. She loves Cars Land. Um, what? <laughs> you weren't even talking. Done. I just looked at the ferret. Now I heard the you. ferret. He's I not doing anything. Ferret. He's pissing me off. That's what he's doing. Okay. Anyway, back to my story. So Flo's Diner is one of the best places to get lunch or dinner because it's a big portion and the chicken's actually really, really good. Um, and right now they have this habanero chicken fingers, which I love, like spicy, sweet stuff. And so it's their Halloween special. And I saw it on Disneyland Reddit and I was like, oh, I've got to try it. Um, gross thing, though, it's on a pile of French fries that's drizzled with ranch. And I'm like, ew, ranch. <gasps> she hates sauce. I hate sauce, but I do like the habanero sauce that goes on the outside. Really confusing, but complicated. It's complicated. Um, and so I go on the mobile app and I order my habanero thing and I order extra fries because I know I'm going to have to pick mine off the fries and wipe off the freaking ranch. You yuck. And then I meander over. My family's going to the animation class where they doodle. And I was like, I'm just going to go eat lunch by myself. So I meander over there and um, I'm waiting for my mobile order to come up and I see that they have these Mater buckets. And Maya loves Mater. And she had talked about these, this, someone, I heard your- He's <laughs> really it. active today. <laughs> anyway, He's Maya loves Mater. I love Tomater. And she, last time we were there, there was someone with like a Tomater bag and they have like these Tomater buckets. And so 
I was like, what the heck? How do you get that? But then they're like, order's up. And I'm like, okay. So I go and I grab my order. I go and I find a table outside, like kind of in the corner. So I'm like very much so kind of sitting by myself. And uh, I eat my chicken finger or I take off my chicken fingers. I wipe them off from the ranch. I go throw the ranch plate away. I come back and I'm like, my family's doodling. So there's no rush. Um, and so I start eating my chicken fingers. I finish a whole one and then I'm on the second one. And I'm thinking to myself, how do you get that mater thing that like that bucket? Like I didn't see it on the mobile order menu, I don't think. And I saw a little sign that was like kids, like comes with the kids menu special. And I'm like, huh, I wonder if that's on the mobile order. So I pick up my phone and I'm like looking and I'm eating. I take a bite and then all of a sudden it goes down the wrong pipe. Um, it's never happened to me. Yeah. Yeah. Usually it's like spit, but this is like chicken. And as soon as it happens, I quite literally, I shoot up. Like I'm like, like I just shoot up from my seat and I'm just like pure panic. Like I'm so, like I'm like, and I'm like, okay. Like it was weird because it all happened so fast, mm -hmm. but I was also able to like have like pretty good like thought process during it. Like I was like, okay, uh, try to breathe through your mouth. And it was like, and I was like, okay. Like in my head, I'm like, okay, try to breathe through your nose. And it's like, oh my God, I cannot breathe. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, am I choking? Mm -hmm. Like, like my thoughts are like going slow. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to die. Like, I was like, holy shit, I'm choking. You're going to die like, via Flo's chicken fingers trying to get yeah. a tomato bucket by yourself. Yeah. And then, and then there's this girl over at another table and she turns and she looks at me and she's like, are you okay? And I just go like this. I go like, I don't want to do like the choking symbol. Cause I was like, that's dramatic. <laughs> I don't know, like at this point, like I like, I've never like choked before. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't want to like, yeah, I don't want to like boy who cries wolf or whatever. Maya, you're going to I swear to you, down. he will fall asleep. <laughs> I just, he's so active right now. He just fell in a, in a box. Okay. So he'll probably just Fine. fall asleep in there. Okay. Anyway, she looks over at me and I go, no. And I just... A point at my throat mm -hmm. and she goes she so she starts panicking but i haven't done the full this she starts panicking and she's like jose jose and her boyfriend who's like grabbing napkins runs back over and she's like i think she's choking and i'm kind of like <laughs> like like i'm so panicked i'm sure my face is bright red like i'm not well and it just like <clears throat> like it's just like the worst feeling ever he comes up behind me and he just slaps me on the back. Like he doesn't Heimlich or anything, but he slaps me on the back. I don't know if it is like just perfect timing or I don't, cause I don't think that would like make me unchoke, but essentially whatever was in my throat kind of like regurgitates out. And then I go like, I like, <gasps> like gasp for air. And it's like clearly irritated and sad from like the habanero sauce. Oh, cause shit, then it just yeah. feels like I'm breathing through like a straw for a little bit. And then like I, I pace for a little bit and I'm like, oh good, thank you. Like it's like all fucked up and I'm like, okay i think and then like some of the staff like a janitor and a waiter come over and they like give me water and like, oh my god it's like a whole thing yeah so yeah I, maybe oh, I, I guess it just like wasn't that far down there so just, that's like, how the I, force. yeah because that's what you're supposed to do with a baby right like you can't the like, force a baby. and i think the spice i think the spice itself caused mm -hmm. like a spasm or something because mm -hmm. it's just like you're not supposed to have habanero in that tube um tube but yeah i think it was more like I don't think he necessarily, like, I don't think the force of him slapping me, like, got it out. I think, like, the shock of him slapping me made my body be like, <gasps> like, okay, yeah. like, you know, like, um, but, like, I'm happy he didn't have to do the Heimlich because that would have that would have been really been embarrassing. embarrassing. So embarrassing. Uh, Imagine having to get Heimlicked in public. <laughs> ew. That's funny that she called her, well, I guess I was, I, I don't know that I would go hit somebody if they were choking. I feel like I would call for help, too. Yeah. If if someone was choking in front of me, I don't I don't I wouldn't go behind them and like hit them. I I I don't know. I would freak out. I'd just be like help probably. Yeah, it was which nice is dumb that because I'm her, her boyfriend. CPR certified and took a whole course on that, but I don't think I could do CPR, which is really sad. That's so sad. I know. I just did that class. Wasn't it like it was oh, like a few months ago? Yeah, like not even 6 months ago. So I'm yeah. current certified. I was like, I'm not kidding you. I was shaking I for bet. like two hours afterwards, just shaking. Yeah, I've never choked. It was it's an scary. awful feeling. It was terrifying. And then my throat was like, 
I was coughing all day. Yeah. Like my throat was so irritated. It's even a little still irritated, but have you seen those not as bad. suction cups for babies where you and it like yeah. pulls it out? You should bring you should carry one of those around. I shouldn't need to. From now on. I should just oh. not get distracted while eating. I guess. You should just not go to flows. All right. Focus while you're eating, everybody. Focus up. Focus while you're eating, Pay especially attention. if it's spicy things. And yeah. But then I did find out how to get the bucket. You have to just order a kid's meal. You have to order a and kid's meal. Bucket. But you can't. Yeah, you have to get a special kid's meal, but you can't do it on the app. Um, anyway, after that, I go and I find my family and I like tell them and they're like, that's crazy. And I'm like, this isn't enough shock for you for like you almost getting a phone call that I'm dead at Flo's Diner. Like, mm. You guys don't seem to like get the magnitude of this. I'm um. Um, well, the next day, I was like, I got to get Maya the bucket. So we go to lunch, and my niece isn't eating. And so I was like, I'll meander over to Flo's, because we were at San Fran, Tokyo, which is the Baymax area. It's like the lunch area. And she didn't want anything. And so I was like, if I go over to Flo's, do you want chicken fingers? And she's like, yeah. So I go over to Flo's. I have to wait in line, because that's the only way to get the bucket. I'm waiting in line. I order her chicken fingers and I have like chicken fingers, this stupid ass bucket. <laughs> and I'm like, I have this, I have a water. It came with like a drink. It came in the bucket? No, it didn't. That's what's stupid as hell. Huh? It's just a bucket. Wait, they gave you your food and then they handed you that? <laughs> yeah. That is. Wait, how does he open again? We go on a picnic. Look how uh stupid he is. That is he doesn't even... exactly what I saw, and that is more- Why do you mean that's stupid? You can put stuff in there. Yeah, but what? It's a purse. No, it's like, this is part of plastic, and this flaps open. It's a purse. I need that for Halloween. I'm going to be Tomater. Okay, well, I got it for you. Thank you! But... Oh my god, I love him. And look what else I got you. <laughs> You're not going to like this. I hated him in but the Halloween costume. Don't have him in the Halloween costume. I got a special drink because it came with a tomato silly straw. Okay. I'm trying to grab it's it. him dressed up as a vampire. <laughs> but it's him in his Halloween costume. No, I hate his Halloween <laughs> costume. <laughs> no, it's him as a vampire. I don't like <sighs> it. I don't like it. I'll take That's it. That's that's yours. I love it. I changed I'll my mind. The, I'll put it in the bucket. Yes! Thank you. Thank you. But thank then you. I had to, from lunchtime, I had to carry around this dumb bucket all day. <laughs> That's really funny. It so, it's a purse. It, it's cool. Except for you know me, so I'd accident, it'd accidentally bump into people and I'd be like, oh, I need your license and registration. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. So stupid. I was like, oh, do you have insurance? It was, it was pretty good. I was a hoot with my bucket. But I actually don't like it. The straw doesn't even fit in it. That's what's the point? Too bad. Well, that's your present from Disneyland. All right. Well, you I heard it here first, guys. For. Cutie almost died, and if you see someone choking, just smack them in the back. I don't think that's good advice. <laughs> I don't actually. You're supposed to Heimlich, but don't Heimlich if you don't know how. Unless there's no one else there, then maybe try. I'm pissed. I ordered coffee and it's not here yet. Ugh. Oh. Ugh. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. But there was also this Disney mom TikToker, like four tables over, mm -hmm. the whole time, just TikTok, like not TikTok, live streaming on TikTok, her and her baby ignoring us. I was like, I could be over here getting the Heimlich, and she would probably be like, not my problem. And it made me mad. That's crazy. So I was like, this would be great content. Turn your camera around. <laughs> Is that what you're thinking while you're done? No, I wasn't. I was oh. like, that's crazy that she is not flinching in her content making. In fairness, I would hope that someone else could help you because I would not feel confident enough. Oh to my help god. You. Not okay, you are different. If I was there with you, it'd be different. I mean, like if a stranger was near me choking, I'd be like, please, for the love of God, someone know how to help this person. I wouldn't ignore them though, but I would be like, help. I wouldn't be the one smacking you on the back, that's all I'm saying. If I had to, one time Ludwig and I were driving home from a road trip and this car in front of us 
he must have fallen asleep, but he veered off the road. Mm -hmm. And you know how like sometimes it's like banks, like the drive back from uh, Nevada to California, there's like banks. Mm -hmm. And he drives just off the road so fast. He's like 60 miles an hour, goes up the bank, completely flips over and oh lands. God. Yeah, lands on top, like the car lands on, on its roof. Yeah. yeah. So we hurry and pull over because I'm like, let pull over, pull over, pull over. He pulls over. We get out of the car. I have, I grab like a scarf. I'm calling 911. I was like, just in case we need like a kerchief or something like, <laughs> yeah, something like I grab a scarf and then and Ludwig runs over and luckily like other people pulled over too. And there happened to be someone that's like an off duty fire, uh, firefighter um, that had a straight plied pride flag as his backdrop of his truck, which was kind of cool. God bless the USA. Yeah. But he helped save, he helped save the man. So. Uh, no one needed my scarf, but I did get the cops there. I was the first Speaking of on. the man in Nevada and scarves. What? <laughs> we both did some research about Burning Man this past week. To talk oh, about you think Burning that man. has to do with a man in Nevada and scarves? It does. Let's do all okay. three of those things. No, the man. That's fair. And scarves. The man. And Nevada. Right. We're an educational we, podcast now. We, we do we do the, the news. Man. We cover the news. No. But Burning Man is in the news. That's why we're talking about it. What is going on? I'm getting blown up on my phone. There's drama. Do you want me to... You feel... Do you want me to drama. hold down the fort? Okay. Cutie's experiencing drama. So, uh, we both did a little bit of research on Burning Man this past week. Uh, you guys have all seen Burning Man in... In the news on TikTok, um, it is a festival. I always thought it was a music festival. I think a lot of people are learning through this Burning Man that it's not. I assumed it was Coachella, but like more hippy dippy. Um, no, there's there's no music. It's like you go out into the middle of the desert, the playa in Nevada, um, and people put up art installations and they hang out with each other and they run around naked and they splash and they dance and they um, have group sex and just live their lives uh, under 10 principles that Burning Man lays out, um, all of which are very, like, What are the 10 principles? Do you have them? I don't have them memorized. I can look them up. Um, radical inclusion, radical self-reliance. Let me see. Leave no trace. Gifting is important. They gift each other things. Decommodification, like what? whatever, like art. What's demodification? Um, they don't want. They, they want to protect their culture from exploitation. They don't want to sell Dude, anything. There's no so currency cringe. at Burning Man, but they do sell ice. Burning Man, I'm calling you a little cringe. You can buy ice, but also you can buy a ticket for like three thousand dollars. <laughs> what? I didn't know there were tickets. I thought it was just show up. Yeah, their tickets, when they first go on sale, sale they're like $2,700 or something. And then at the end, they go down to like $500 something. Oh, dollars. Something bad your happened. Your just crashed. No! <laughs> um, I'm going to need your license and registration floor. Radical self-reliance, radical self-expression, communal effort, civic responsibility, leave no trace, participation, and immediacy. That's, sorry, I understand if you like... Burning Man. I just don't understand how I could ever be you. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's fair. It it's would not be so it would much not effort to go play in the mud and like Usually there's not mud, in fairness. Okay, fair. Usually it's just dirt desert and dirt and wind and sand and playa alone. It sounds awful. Just go camping somewhere. It is very weird. It's very like cosplaying poverty i've seen that going yeah. around a lot is like they pay three thousand dollars to go out into the desert with like no money and then just like trade with people and enjoy art exhibits um and thrive in the desert yeah if you want to have an orgy you can do that at home i get it okay you know what? i'm being a hater i'm sure it is i'm sure it's a very unique experience but it is kind of like, I think, okay, so the very first Burning Man was in San Francisco, actually, <laughs> um, until eventually it got banned. But it's like, with them, it was kind of more of like a uh, stick it to the man, like, you know, we're just a bunch of guys, like it was made by a bunch of guys. We're just a bunch of guys having fun, you know? This one, um, 1980, by the way. It's been around a long time. 
Yeah, it's been around forever. Or in but the 1980s. now it, it feels like it's just become like, like if you go to Burning Man, you're like that type of person. <laughs> Is that mean? I'm sure someone's. Gonna it's not nice. <laughs> I know, but listen, my ex-boyfriend that now wears a he tail a and a pirate hat, he has gone he to Burning Man. And he's like, he's like that, like, he's that guy. I think the reality of Burning Man is it, yes, started in the 80s in San Francisco was like a chill group of people that were actually like, we love the environment and we hate capitalism and like, let's stick it to the man. But now it's there were 70,000 people or 80,000 people or something. Yeah. And the art installations that they keep building keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And remind you, they burn these down. And so it's like, are you really an environmentalist if you're just going to be adding that? Like, you're not. Like, you're you're simply not. Yeah. It's also just way too big. And now we have Instagram and TikTok like influencers go. You know, it's Coachella, right? People go to Coachella for yeah. Instagram, like to yeah. influence, like to make TikToks and stuff. I think it's just kind of becoming that. Which is probably their worst fear. It's actually really sad for when they started Burning Man. It's like, that's not yeah. what it's supposed to be. Um, you sent a, a post in the Discord that said that they have a private jet for people to fly around and have sex in. Did you fact check that by chance? Nope. I didn't either. Damn it. I wanted I to know, know if how was, to if there fact was truth check to that. that. It, was, it was this guy on Reddit. I'll read you guys the whole thing. Okay, wait. We need to, like, get here. We're not here yet because I'm roasting people that love Burning Man, which if you're a true Burning Man lover, you won't even roast me back because you're just a lover. So I'm calling you out now. <laughs> That's crazy. Don't be hypocrites. I think before we start the conversation, my my disclaimer is like, I like what Burning Man is supposed to be. I think that social media and the sheer size of it has probably ruined it for what it's supposed to be. What it's supposed to be, I think is fine like anything that my ex-boyfriend likes so i okay. think it's crazy. we hate him we hate burning man ew all right i'm game no i, I think I, I i do i i do think i'm sure i'm sure it is a crazy experience i'm sure it's like edc i think it's probably fun to get with a bunch of strangers and do have drugs sex. and dance all night and have sex and have no repercussions essentially mm -hmm. i think it's a land of no repercussions but yeah so they that's what they do is they meet in the desert. They it's actually really interesting. They have like a grid system and set it up in blocks like the town. So you like and then they build. So like that's the other thing is like it's so wasteful. They straight up will build like a building a and then take it down. And, yeah. Yeah. Like it's not just tents like they will build little houses and sheds and all that stuff. And then they just like take it down and it's supposed to be. Yeah, pack in, pack out, which you're not supposed to leave a trace. Um, however, like, it's just it's just very wasteful. It's the, under the guise of, like, I don't know. It's a wasteful thing. Um, but essentially, Hurricane Hillary came through, this last Burning Man, and it made it all the way to Playa del... What's it called? I don't know. What do they call it? They call it the playa or something. The playa. Yeah, that's all I've playa. seen. Black it rock. It made it to the playa. Oh, black rock. That's what it that's what it is. And it rained and it turned everything into like it's interesting mud out there. It's almost the type of mud that like like you need to wear a mask because the dust will like like it's coat alkaline. your lungs. Yeah, yeah you it's breathe not... it in and you die. It's not true. Cuz it it used to well, it used to be the bottom of a a lake bed that dried up. So it's like really fine fine dirt. And so it rains and, you know, freaking Nevada can't take that much rain. So it just becomes this clay like mud and people are like, like, and that's, stuck. Yeah. Like they're out there in the desert and they've all driven out and now they can't drive back out because they get stuck. So they're literally stuck yeah. in the middle of the desert. Yeah. And they so have there's a bunch of stuff on the news talking about like, 70,000 stranded at Burning Man, like all of these things. But then it was weird because then I I watched multiple vlogs of like people at Burning Man and mm -hmm. they're like, they're like living. Apparently we're in a state of national emergency. What do you think about that? And she's like, I'm just having fun. Like <laughs> yeah. it's such a great, like, so I don't even know if they are scared. These people at Burning mm -hmm. Man, every single thing I saw from like, on the floor interviews or vlogs or whatever they are fine, they fine they're like yeah. we're just here for fun 
it rained, but that's fine. We're sharing with each other. We've got water, like we've got food. We're okay. Mm -hmm. And it's like confusing. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. Confusing the two different stories. Yeah. Um, that's, I had the same thing when I was looking at blogs and like videos, TikToks, whatever, people at the festival, they seemed thrilled to be there. Yeah. They're, they're like, just, like so totally fine. fine. But which they, I like those people. <laughs> they couldn't get, um, like trucks out there to service the porter potties. I think what people were scared of on the news is like they don't have any food or water. But like then the vlogs I saw, they were like, we have like a week's worth of tuna left. But I think at this point they're all out, right? Yeah. Maybe not all of be. them, but they, they all but started leaving. But they've also leaving. left a disaster so in their bad. wake. Yeah. It's so bad. It was like five miles from the site to the road and then another five miles to the airport. And so they're they're putting on like what they can carry and then walking five miles in this like unwalkable mud clay. Um, but a ton of people just left all their shit and then walked to the road and then walked to the airport. Uh, so they left a bunch out. I read an article this morning and they're like, it's all getting cleaned up. It's all disappearing like every year. We love the playa. And then I realized that I the doubt article it. was it was by it was written by Burning Man Project, which is the nonprofit yeah. that is Burning Man. And I was like, OK, Um so we'll see what what it looks like but yeah disaster yeah so this guy this guy goes to post on reddit and he says burning man 2023 explained burning man is a festival for rich white people who want to smoke weed and trip acid in the nevada desert and pretend they're one with the earth it's not a music festival or anything it serves any purposes purpose it's just vibes a hundred year flash flood just hit nevada including where burning man is held ev this very weekend Dry desert dr ground can't suddenly absorb water, let alone that much water all at once. So now Burning Man is a giant med puddle with thick, deep mud. Nobody can get in or out, so they closed all the roads. FEMA just told the 73,000 people stranded to shelter in place, ration food and water. Essentially, you're on your own. Good luck. The porta potties are overflowing into the mud that they're all walking in. The official CDC Twitter uh, tweeted and then deleted that there's confirmed Ebola b breakout at Burning Man. But people are pretty sure it's just trench illnesses, like in World War I, trench illness. Uh, earlier this week, climate activists protested against Burning Man and all the attendees drove right past them and yelled at them and tried to get them arrested. There's a private jet at B Burning Man where people can join the Mile High Club. It just takes off and lands all day and lets people fuck in it. No word yet on the fuck plane's current status and location. I did not look to fact check, check the fuck plane. I believe the Plane. But if there is a fuck plane, that's fucked up. Because that's I not very cool. climate activist at all. <laughs> that's not is very... That, is that what Burning Man is trying to be? One, I mean, one of their things is leave no trace. Their they're, they're, like, yeah. supposed to be environmentally inclined. Conscious. Conscious, yeah. yeah. But it's more of a stick it to the man, isn't it? Like, yeah, I guess. No, no capitalism except for ice they buy i ice. thought the overall concept when and i first tickets. heard about it was like very like artsy hipster like like you know we build these sculptures and you can only experience this art once and then you burn it down and that's just how blah blah you know like metaphor like i thought that's what it was mostly about who all, how many people do you know that have been just your ex my ex and then some of uh taylor's uh sisters I only know one person who's ever been and we're not yet yeah, don't know her. She's from high school. I just saw that she went on Facebook like years ago. Um, she went to Burning Man. She's she was always it always seemed like she was super into the like hippie stuff. I don't know. And then she had a wedding and it was so interesting. She made like a invite to her wedding on Facebook just to like everybody, including me, which like I don't Weird. know her. Right. But she she made a Facebook post and she was like come to my wedding. It was like in another country or something. She was like, come to my wedding and everybody's going to bring something to contribute to the wedding. They're like not doing catering. They're not doing like decorations or oh, whatever. Oh, it's like potluck. She was, it was like Burning Man. She was like, everybody just bring something to contribute and we'll make a like a wedding together. Um, it's very interesting. I think the people that go to- I would be such a bad friend in that instance because I would just- bring everything you for plan a wedding. the whole wedding <laughs> i would be like all right i'll be there oh in another article the guy showed the flight tracker log of the plane we got logs oh yeah plane august 31st real. one two three four five flights in this every trip shot. was around 20 minutes except the last one lasted three hours oh my 
airplane's real. Just kidding. I don't know if it's real. I still that's not it's real, check, but it's it's something. <laughs> I believe it. That's insane. I believe in the plane. That's insane. Um, well, there's also this. So it's really interesting how like society. <laughs> I hate the word society, society specifically because I'm not even making a joke here. An ex boyfriend used it so much. Really? It drove me insane. He was one of those people that tried to use big words to sound smart, but he was so dumb. And he would constantly throw the word society in places. And it was so annoying. I hate that word to this day. Well, I don't know if you've ever watched in, or read Into the Wild. But no. there's like that song that plays in Into the Wild. It's like society something. But it's a good song. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> society. Um... I don't know why this happens, but it feels like things start with good intentions and then they slowly become so insidious or capitalistic or whatever. And another example of like a, I watch a lot of documentaries and there's, there's this Woodstock documentary called Trainwreck. I, okay. I watched it. You didn't tell me it was a three part docu series. You were like, oh, you gotta watch realize. this Netflix. <laughs> and so I go to watch it. It's 50 minutes. I was like, all right. I'll do it. I watched it, and then it's like next episode, and I was like, "What?" <laughs> there, oh, there are three my bad. episodes, and they're all like an hour each. I did. I watched the first and last though. I didn't realize. So I'm caught up um, on Woodstock. But essentially, Woodstock started the same way. Like Woodstock was like this chill ass viber concert, peace, love, and music. Yeah, peace, love, and music. And then all of a sudden, somebody like you know, years later, it kind of like died down, and they're like, "We're gonna bring back Woodstock." Woodstock '99 is the what I'm talking about. Um. So they rent out this big airplane hangar area mm -hmm. and they they throw the concert of Woodstock. And now there's like adults whose teenagers are going to Woodstock. So they're like, you're going to love it. Like, get out there. Like, blah, blah, blah. you know, yeah. and like these teenagers have heard stories of Woodstock and like they're ready to go eat, pray, love, listen to music. Context and too. the first Woodstock was like or there's 1969 Woodstock, which was like peace, love, hippies, like. And it was 400,000 people. Huge. Yeah, it's right? crazy. But it was fine. Like, nothing terrible happened. As far as I know, I didn't really look into that one. Woodstock 99 was, they had a very different lineup of artists, too. Like, the first one was, like, chill, hippie vibes. And then in 99, they were like, this is not your parents' Woodstock. And they had, like, corn and Rage Against the Machine and Limp Biscuit, right? So it's like... like the teenage, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's a very different vibe. Like that's not gonna work and, and 99 also, like, was a quarter million people which is a ton of people quarter million yeah wait but that means the other one is more yeah oh but it's still a quarter million but regardless this one was on like this was planned by people that didn't know how to plan they were trying to save money they're trying to make as much money as possible and so it's like on this airport like just tarmac it's like on tarmac in the middle of the summer which is like oh that's gonna be a billion degrees and People go out there and like same shit happens. They have no access to water all of a sudden. The the toilets start overflowing into like the water that like they're able to drink. So there's this huge outbreak of people getting sick and they're like stranded there because like the traffic's so bad that people are abandoning cars, which makes it worse for like people behind them. And like people jumped on stage and lit the freaking stage on fire. A lot of young girls or women in general were like, you know, it started off as like, this is Woodstock, we're crazy, like taking off their shirts, like, because mm -hmm. there was a lot of nudity at the first Woodstock, because it was like very be free with your body and blah, blah, blah. And this one kind of started the same until people and people started taking advantage of that and would like grope women or like rape women. Yeah. And it like became the cesspool of like just insidious activity. And it was just like so sad because it's like, that's not what Woodstock was about. And it feels like it feels like, and I don't know if this is fair, so I'm curious if we we have a commenter that goes goes to Woodstock. Obviously, I, I was being a dick about it, and I, I don't fully mean that. It's just, I, at the end of the day, I don't give a shit if they Woodstock. went to Woodstock. Yeah, but if there's someone that went to Woodstock, because, like, the media right now and, like, TikTok and, you know, people that hate Woodstock are bandwagoning on it and saying, like, oh, my God, it's turned into this insidious, gross thing, and, like, you know, people are getting assaulted people are like you know like no one took care of us the water and the shit and it's all mixing but then again i saw the vlogs and it's like are these just people that are drinking the kool-aid on the vlogs that are like guys it's great like yeah or is that genuinely the energy there because like those people seemed like very nice people mm -hmm. let me 
I'm going to set the whole stage for Woodstock because I watched this documentary this morning, right? There's like, like you said, what is it, an air, air force? Airplane hangar. Airplane it was like a, hangar. Um, yeah. So no trees. It's like all pavement. It's 100 degrees out there. They actually, okay, so because they were, it was like a money venture, right? It turned into this like, they needed to profit off of it thing. They sold the selling rights for vendors to, I think it was Coca-Cola. I don't know whatever but they they sold the vending rights so then they could choose the prices of all the food yeah it became a monopoly right which like obviously reflects on woodstock but it's not woodstock that was choosing those prices it was the vendors regardless people go into woodstock they don't let them bring any food or drinks or whatever in and then they go to buy water and it's four dollars in 1999 a water bottle was like six dollars so it was four dollars at the start by day three water was like ten to twelve dollars a bottle because they were running out of it (laughs) and like Cutie said, the water was contaminated by the porta potties. It was all mixing together. People were getting like trench mouth, like people were getting ill. Oh yeah, trench because, mouth. Yeah, I because about they that. were like they were getting like cold not cold sores. Um like thrush. Like ulcers, like in their mouth, yeah. yeah. Um, from brushing their teeth and bathing in and drinking in this contaminated water. But they didn't have a choice because water bottles were twelve dollars and the lines were like hours <laughs> to get water. So they're pissed off. These are like young people that are pissed off, they're hot, they can't get water. And then by day three, they're all disgusting because they also can't shower, because there's like no lines or the lines are crazy to get a shower and the water's contaminated anyway. Um, and then they bring on red hot chili peppers. So the crowd's like going crazy. It's day three. It's Sunday. Um, They're like, Danny, California. Yeah. Yeah. And then this stupid, 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 stupid production of the event. They were like, let's make a statement for Columbine. So I asked you about this earlier. Columbine oh, had happened. Right. It was a I school shooting that happened like a few months prior to Woodstock. And they were like, let's give this crowd, this angry rioting crowd, let's give them 100,000 candles so that they can hold them up and protest against gun violence. Yeah. So this angry, Beautiful. hot, pissed off teenage crowd that's now listening to Red Hot Chili Peppers is given 100,000 candles. So they light fires right? A big fire gets lit up like uh, near the stage and the fire crew wouldn't go out to put it out because they were afraid of the crowd. (laughs) So the fire is just, there's a raging fire. They tell the lead singer of Red Hot Chili Peppers, they're like, can you please go out to listen to you? And he's like, okay. And he goes out there and then he plays the song Fire by Jimi Hendrix as like a Jimi Hendrix tribute. And then because he's singing the song Fire, everyone starts lighting fires. So the whole place lights on fire. They're so cool. They're throwing each other around. They're sexually assaulting women. People are getting hurt. They're climbing on top of towers, knocking them down, taking the walls down of Woodstock. They find ATMs in the middle of the thing and they start breaking them open because they're like, let's take our money back. They like riot the vendors because they're doing this in cash because it's 1999 and so the vendors have like 60 grand on them from the weekend that they've taken from these people they haven't been able to escape either (laughs) yeah and so then they like riot the the vendors because they have all this money in their cash registers um and then they had to bring in like riot police and handle them and it was a disaster that's what happened i think it was i think it was cool but you're right all the vlogs that you see and everyone that talks about being at woodstock they were like it was the best time of my life yeah they loved it they loved it they were living that's why i can't tell i can't tell what's real people love anarchy every once in a while as long as they don't have to face consequences and it when i feel like when it happens in an isolated festival like that it probably just feels good it's like the hunger games i think about it like the purge like i think the purge the purge quite literally happen like it like i'm not saying like there's like it's not going to happen but i'm saying like there's a world where like that could pass you know like like that could be a thing that they're like they're like yeah you know get it out of you because people would Mm -hmm. people just would if they were like if like the if biden if old joe got on his mic tomorrow and was like you know what go ahead that movie was so good we're November 1st, go ahead, you know, blah, blah. People would. They yeah, would. They would. It's crazy. Yeah. It's like, huh? It's really scary. I think humans destroy things. 
Yeah. And I think if you get enough of them together, awful things will happen. And that's what every festival ever has shown. Burning Man, two people have died. Granted, it has a very long history. But two people have died at Burning Man by running into the fire. Running into the Burning Man. Oh, yeah. Coachella. Actually, I think there's only one Coachella death of overdose, but hundreds to the hospital from Coachella from overdosing. You got Woodstock. Women are raped. Women are sexually assaulted. I the forgot. whole thing wasn't burns there, down. Like, I remember. Wasn't? Are you sure it's only two people? I feel like there was like this one thing where like a bunch of people ran into the Burning Man. I heard two from one podcast, but I only have one source for it. I see. I don't know. Yeah, I. Uh, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, humans are just terrible. Do terrible things. It's really sad and scary. It is sad and scary. If you were in the purge, would you hide or would you murder? Hide. A bajillion where, where percent. Where would I'm you hiding. hide? I'm not telling you and them. <laughs> Why would I tell them? What the That's hell? for me and only me to know. I'll tell you after we finish recording. <laughs> Are you I hiding? Would, yeah. I'm either hiding or I'm making, I'm scared to make alliances because you never know when there's going to be a mutiny, you know? You don't want to captain a ship. You never know when they're going to fair, 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 fair. boot you off. And um, I think, I think I would fly out of the country. I don't think, you mean before it happens? Yeah, it happens on Monday, on that Saturday. That is what the rich people do in The Purge, in the movie. They leave. Yeah, but what did I do with my cat and dog? I take them. I guess you take them. I just have to take them. They you said don't like cat and dog. Are you leaving one behind? Coots can fend for herself. <laughs> she is like, she's got her wits about her. She'll be That's fine. Um, no, I think I'd fly out of the country. I also think if I had to have a hiding spot, I, I used to think about this. Um, the, the bakery I used to work at, you have big walk-in fridges and mm -hmm. they're like, they essentially turn into safes on the mm -hmm. inside. Like they are thick bitches. Plus then you'd have food and like a fridge isn't too cold. You could, you'd be fine in a fridge. If you went into the freezer, you'd be fucked. But I could, I could be in the fridge for 24 hours. All right. Well, now you know where to find food, cutie. Go find the closest. Walk. <laughs> giant fridge. Giant walk-in <laughs> fridge. Or I'd go to Old Navy and I'd stand with the mannequins. Nice. Okay. Or actually at the Old Navy I worked at, there was a crawl space that went into the ceiling and I thought to myself, I could go in there. No one's checking the Old Navy crawl space. Guys, if you were in the purge, what are you doing? I'm hiding. Cutie's also hiding, actually. I'm hiding, but maybe I'm fighting. I don't know. I'm not fighting unless someone tries to kill me. Hard pass. On that. How do you know if someone's coming for you? They, because they're there and you're hiding from them? They would just come for us because we have a podcast. Probably. They hate our podcast. They hate our podcast. They and hate like, one about it. Fuck you. You stop drinking wine. You stop you just, doing the wine pours. If you just camp, right? Like, if you camp a corner with a shotgun, mm -hmm. then you can't die. Because they That's walk into true. your house. Poof. You definitely could die still. Your chances are maybe lower. But also you can shoot through a wall. So if they when knew I you was... were in the corner, you'd just get shot through the corner. Oh. I guess if they brought more than one person at a time. Yeah, it'd be really, really bad. I think hiding is better. It is interesting. Maybe it shows your true colors if you're a hider or a fighter. I don't really have anyone I'd like to kill. I... At 25? I'm, I feel pretty comfortable knowing what my strengths and weaknesses are. Strength is not one of my strengths. Right. Being a big, strong person, it's not for me. Never will be. What if people came and <laughs> murdered your animals? I have way too many to... I can't. I can't. You can't. You can't put them, them in the old Navy crawl space? I let them all go. Oh, I open the gates. so annoying. Yeah, it'd be awful. You'd no, have we do. Ha we have an emergency evacuation plan, obviously, um, yeah. for all the animals. But like in the purge, it wouldn't matter because where are you going to take them? No, to? it's like we have locations that we take the animals to, but that won't wouldn't matter. I also think a meta that no one thought about in the purge is you get in a car, and you know, on like the drive from California to Vegas, there's just empty land, and then you just veer off, 
30 miles into just like the Nevada and just desert. stop and wait. You just live there for 24 hours. Yeah. No one is. That's no one scary. Knew you took hell. that turn. Really? It, people definitely know you took that turn. You leave tire tracks in the sand. They don't. They didn't. They don't know. They don't see them. Mm -mm. They're too. Busy I don't think that's murdering. a good idea at all. Really? I think that's. I think it's a really bad idea because it would be very obvious that you left. Not if you get off on one of those exits that has like nothing left on it, and then you veer off from one of those exits. Sometimes. Maybe. Do you want to hear this? Yeah. Why wouldn't you? This is a podcast. I don't. Know yes, why I please. Asked that. Thank you. Uh, sometimes when I'm on road trips, I, when I have the two cats and the dog in the car, I don't want to go into gas stations because I don't want to leave them in the car alone. So I'll get off on those abandoned ghost town exits and then I'll just get out of my car and pee on the road. That's fair. Because it's I'm... safer than going into a gas station. That's fair. It is, it's like a little bit scary. It's really? lower probably like lower percentage risk than being around a bunch of people but it's still really scary because you're like alone yeah one time actually one time i pull off and this is i was going to i don't know where i was going i pull off and there's like a ghost town gas station right and i don't i'm on the other side and i'm outside of my car i'm peeing on the ground and as i walk back around my car so now i'm facing the gas station about to open my car door I just hear this massive like clanking, like it sounded like someone dropped a soup can or something from inside the gas station. And uh, like, uh, nope. And it it was straight up one of those gas stations that are like so old, like the windows are boarded up, but like that that wood's even rotted and mm -hmm. like Yeah. No, mm -mm. It was, that one was a little creepy. Uh uh. No, no, no. We should do a, a podcast where or a vlog where we go into one of those abandoned buildings and, and record from there. Oh, we become what are they called? Ghost urban hunters. Explorers. Oh, oh. <laughs> we have different motives here. Urban explorers. Yeah, I think it'd be fun, but we have to bring weapons. Or we could hide what? out one of there in the purge. We could hide out somewhere that's like really not secure, because then people would be like, "Why would people hide in there?" Yeah, but where would you park your car? They would know you're in there. I don't bring a car. How do you get there? I walk. You can't. Yeah, I can. You go an hour, you go a day before the purge is supposed to start, and then you start camping out early. You know what's crazy is that the people leaving Burning Man were so covered in mud, and they'd get to, like, Vegas, or somewhere around, somewhere where the Rio Hotel is. That's why I assumed Vegas. And, like, they did, the hotels did not want them to stay there because that specific dirt, like, won't come out of sheets and mm -hmm. That and makes so sense. Like, and like going down drains. Like, if you're clay. if you're staying here, like you are paying double essentially, which like that's just that is messed up. Just because you're dirty. They were really dirty. They were really dirty. Really dirty. They were really dirty at Woodstock too. They would they were like sliding and like playing in the mud. It's like mud run looking people, and they were like, "Yeah, Woodstock, let's go!" But they were all getting trench mouth because it was poopy water. Do you think it's interesting when, hey, comment, sound off. Is it interesting when we learn about things and then tell them to you and probably misquote a, di a bunch of different facts and then you guys correct us in the comments? Is that fun for you? <laughs> Do you guys like this? Do you like fact checking us on current events? Mine, Would you like I us if we were worms you could fact check? I, w I showed cutie worm earrings yesterday and she didn't like them. Ew. I didn't. I thought also, cool. last week on our Patreon or two weeks ago on our Patreon, we showed like these beetle jewelry and apparently they are real dead beetles mm -hmm. that's why I was, I was like they look like beetles there's no way that's, that's not real sad i thought it was fake and now yeah. i feel sad for all the beetles that they just kill and turn into jewelry i'm going like to the gala inspired by a beetle but i'm not gonna tell you which kind all the spiders are crawling out from hell right now pardon have have you noticed that right before it starts to turn fall? If you live in LA, there are spiders in everywhere. Good. They're living their no. lives. You know what else There's is everywhere in LA? Humans. Yeah. Infestation. Spiders yeah, don't like, crawl out from hell. They crawl out from their little egg, eggy little egg sacs. They're pissing me off. They're everywhere. They're not doing and anything. They, yesterday, I let Swift out my front door. And I go to walk out and there's a spider just hanging right in front of my front door. Yeah, he's living his life. Him. 
I hated him. Okay, well, that's I not cut, nice at all. I went and grabbed, Swift was peeing, I went and grabbed scissors, and I cut his web, and so he went on the ground. <laughs> okay, you could have just, like, or no. just walked around him. No, he was, like, right in the middle, and okay. I didn't want him there. I don't want well, him thinking that's okay, because it's not. You don't like other little buggies either, right? No. Okay, well then you better start liking spiders because spiders eat those. And if we didn't have spiders, you would have way more other little buggies. Other little buggies are fine. You just said you didn't like them. Yeah, but you just in said my you didn't tier like list, I feel like you're is. backtracking. Spiders are F tier. If we didn't have little spiders, you would have so many little buggies, you'd be drowning in little buggies. So Coots would eat them. Coots she loves, loves little buggies. <laughs> she loves the buggies. That's what she said. I wrote like. this down as a topic because. I don't get high anymore, but sometimes it feels like I am. But like, do you think, like, okay, who invented the phone? I don't know. What? It's Alexander Graham, you idiot. Steve Jobs. Uh, who invented electricity? Albert Einstein. <laughs> Essentially, everything is like traceable. A so lot of Benjamin things are Franklin. traceable. Who invented electricity? <laughs> Thomas S. Monson. Who's this guy? Benjamin Franklin. I feel like he's okay, he's credited, but it's not really him. Is that the story? <gasps> Drama. I don't know. <laughs> Albert Einstein. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Um, but I was thinking most most inventions are traceable. Like you could Google right now who invented the phone and it's Alexander Graham or who invented this and it's so and so who invented okay. a boat. Maybe you couldn't find the boat. Boat's been around a long time. That's been a long, a long time. Or like the name. Isn't it sad that the name of the guy that invented the wheel, like the best invention ever, we don't even know his name. He invented this thing and he was remembered for nothing. I mean, he's besides gone, being so a, I don't know the, that it... the guy. I don't Benjamin think Benjamin Franklin is he's... on money, and the wheel guy isn't on. But he's on and money, and people don't look at it. Get and they're to like, oh yes, Benjamin Franklin, thank you so much for this electricity. He's just, he's just there. I do every time I no, use that don't. five dollar bill. <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> I think about him. Well, I was thinking about, I was like, I wonder like what happens, like think like, okay, so I'm at, I'm at Disneyland and I do that thing where anyone's taking a picture. I'm like, do you want me to take it? You know? Yeah. And I'm like, say cheese. And then they say cheese. And I'm like, the guy who invented saying cheese has been forgotten. And we all say it and we stole, we, we literally stole his swag and we don't even know him. Isn't that sad? No, cause he's dead. And Maya. so why would he care? He, he doesn't have the ability to care about that. He's dead. Because he could be remembered for his greatness. By people that don't know him anyway? <laughs> I just don't think it matters. Yeah. I don't... Th I have a very, like, doomsy, like, nothing happens after we die. Okay, like, so you like Steve cares. Irwin, right? I do like Steve Irwin, yeah. Aren't you, aren't you happy that when it comes to, like, animals, even though he's dead, you're like, there was a good guy named Steve Irwin, and I remember him. I'm scared of saying this. My honest, my honest reaction oh my to God. that is like, I love Steve Warren for what he did for wildlife and conservation. But you're not parasocial. I don't really care about the person so much. I, I'm like, I do, and that he did a yes. great job. But I care about what he's done, not like him as a person. The human attached to him, so which like, is yeah, which you is think I think like what you anyone wanted. could be Jane Goodall. Well, no. But I, I appreciate her work that. more than, like, her as a person, because I don't know her as a person. And she lived for her work. Same with Steve Irwin. Wait, is she dead? Jane Goodall? No, she's not said, dead. I'm sorry. Oh, you said lived, and I almost got so sad. Remember when Coco she's the old, Gorilla though. died? Who? Coco the Gorilla. Oh, yeah, yeah. She's, yeah, she's really 89. She's a Ooh. queen. Yeah. See, and I'm happy that I remember Jane Goodall for everything she did. That's bizarre. Yeah, I just sad don't. Because my other hero is the cheese guy, and I don't remember <laughs> him. I don't know. If I any of you know, know who invented saying say cheese, please comment. Thank you. Yeah, tell me about him a little bit. Yeah, we want to know. Um, 
On these podcasts where Cutie and I, sorry, on these podcasts where Cutie and I do a little research and tell you things, just know that um, we don't know what we're, we're talking about. We're stupid. Yeah, we're dumb as hell. So you know what's dumb? What? Let me talk. This is, let me go, let me society. Let me go on a rant here for a second. Uh oh. We we come on this podcast and we like do our best because we think something's interesting and we give our info and we're like we give our takes and we're like we do our best. That and I then there's with. other podcasts that'll go on. They'll be like, yeah, deliberately just spew. Sh-. And they just make jokes and no one fact checks them. And then yeah. you bitches fact check. Don't fact check us. You, you can fact check. You us. can try and fact check us. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> just don't be rude about it. <laughs> just don't be rude about it. No, oh, we're my trying. God. We're I got trying. so triggered last week because of one of you commenters. You pissed me the frick off. I was dissociated. I'm saying it. I'm saying it. No, this one was so dumb. I'm dissociated, right? I'm so dissociated. <laughs> this person commented and she, they were like, you're definitely taking way too much of your prescription. Like it shows like you should get off the Xanax. Like you look addicted or something like that. I'm like, bitch, I'm not on the Xanax. That's why I'm dissociated. You dumb fucking. I won't make that harder for our editor. I, but I wanted to say it. It's already pretty. <laughs> There's already some work to be done there. <laughs> I wanted no, to say that, the one with the C, but I didn't do it. We've talked about this before. They don't shut up. They don't know you. You're not her psychiatrist. It's just an insane thing to to imply that you know what's going on inside of her brain or with her hormones or with anything. It's just crazy. Crazy. Be like you have to stop. We're taking Burning this Man you experts. Seem crazy. Experts. Like, we are Burning Man experts, though. Don't fact check us on that. We're both burners. Yeah. Um, we're burners should we go to burning man next year no dude i would hate it i would hate it so much i would never like it it's not for me none of music festivals aren't for me i went to i know i went to coachella right but it wasn't for me it was for a guy that i was dating she was trying to be a cool girl i said it i was trying to be a cool girl and i went it was not for me i don't do things like that i went because him and his friends always go and it was turns out not for me so at least you tried at least I tried. That's important. Well, thank you guys for watching. If you find the cheese guy, let us know. We're going to hop on over to the Patreon episode now where I'm going to leak some secrets. I'm also going to leak some secrets. Secrets. Uh, thank you guys for watching. and um, Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Goodbye.